Hello, my name is Chris Butts, and I'm going to talk to you today about storing shell peanuts in PIX bags. The collaborators on this project were Lisa Dean, Keith Hendricks, Renee Arias, Ron Sorensen, and Marshall Lamb. David Hoisington and Jamie Rhodes at the Feed the Future Peanut Innovation Lab in Athens, Georgia, asked us to do this research because they needed some low-cost, innovative storage solutions for peanuts in some of the countries that they're doing work in. We had four technical support people at the National Peanut Lab that helped us, Terrence Moon, John Gardner, Dan Todd, and Valerie Orner. The Georgia Department of Agriculture State Seed Lab in Tifton performed all of the germination tests for the samples that we had. The Purdue Improved Crop Storage System is basically a small-scale hermetic low oxygen storage that was developed by Purdue University as part of a Feed the Future project for Cowpea. It is a triple bag system that uses two 80 micrometer high density polyethylene bags and one woven polypropylene outer bag. You place one of the high density polyethylene bags inside the other and then place that double polyethylene bag inside the woven polypropylene outer bag. The outer bag provides protection against abrasions and punctures. You then fill the inner polyethylene bag with the commodity that you want. You manually squeeze the air from the inner bag, twist the top of it, and tie it closed. You then squeeze the air from the second polyethylene bag, twist it, and seal it and then you twist and seal the outer polypropylene bag. The respiration of product and insects inside the bag consumes the oxygen within the bags, creating a low oxygen, high carbon dioxide atmosphere inside the bag. There's minimal moisture diffusion through the polyethylene bags, maintaining moisture content of the product as the same as what it was when you put it in. This system has been successfully used on many commodities to minimize losses due to insects and spoilage. Commodities used on are maize, rice, cocoa, and coffee. The objectives of this study were to determine the efficacy of using PIX bags to store shell peanuts by observing the changes during storage in seed germination, free fatty acid content, and aflatoxin contamination. We started out with high oleic and normal oleic peanuts. We had two moisture levels, one at 7% and one at 8%. And then we had four storage methods, burlap and then three variations of the PIX bags. The first one was the PIX bag evacuated in the manner described earlier. The second was a PIX bag and we evacuated using a shop vac. And then the fourth treatment was a PIX bag with a sachet of chlorine dioxide, dry fumigant thrown in, and then evacuated in the manner described previously. So we had two oleic acid contents, two moisture contents, four storage methods, and three replications of each for a total of 48 samples. We filled the bags with a mixture of runner peanuts that rode a 1664 slotted screen. The burlap bags had about 50 pounds each in it, and the PIX bags held about 60 pounds each. We then placed a data logger in one bag of each of the storage types in the normal oleic high initial moisture treatment to record temperature, relative humidity, and carbon dioxide. We then placed those samples in the storage structure with the goal of maintaining the temperature between 18 and 27 degrees Celsius. We sampled periodically from the beginning of the test through the end of the test, which was 301 days. We then analyzed each of those samples for germination, aflatoxin, free fatty acids, peroxide values, and then sensory values. We will not be presenting any of the sensory data today. Here are the results in the form of a analysis of variance table. Basically, it shows us that the storage type, the initial moisture content, and days in storage had effects on some of the parameters that we measured as performance. 
we can see that the oleic fatty acid content nor the replication had any effect on any of our parameters that we measured. We examined the temperature and see how well we controlled within our range. We looked at, we had a minimum temperature of about 13 degrees Celsius and a maximum of about 32. We had a space heater for the cooler months and we're trying to control between about 18 and 27. And we did that up to about 150 days. We had a power failure and uh, didn't catch it for a while. And so we had about a period of about 30 days when we were below our target temperature, restarted the heater and then maintained that. And then once we got to the warmer temperatures, we had temperatures that exceeded our desired temperature range. The relative humidity basically stayed between 70 and 80 percent for all of the fixed bags treatments. And this was in response to the equilibrium moisture content or equilibrium relative humidity within each bag. You can see that the burlap bag basically followed the ambient relative humidity in the storage unit. The relative humidity then influenced the moisture content that we saw in response. In the burlap bag, you can see that we decreased moisture content from the initial 7.5% down to approximately 5.5% uh, moisture content. And then as storage period progressed and relative humidities began to increase, you can see that our moisture contents increased. In the PIX bags, you can see that after about 50 days, we went up to about 9%. This was probably due to moisture migration within the bag. And then it maintained, settled back down and maintained right around 8% for all treatments. Here we take a look at the carbon dioxide levels inside the bags. And we can see that in the burlap bag, CO2 levels remained near the ambient CO2 levels of about 400 parts per million. We can see that in the PIX bags that it went from 400 parts per million up to 5,000 parts per million in a period of ranging from four to about seven days. We can see that in the normal PIX bag, it took about four days for it to reach the saturation level of 5,000 parts per million. And then the PIX bag with the chlorine dioxide fumigant in it took a little bit longer and took about six and a quarter uh, days to reach that 5,000 parts per million. The germination in the PIX bags continually declined from an average of about close to 80% all the way down to about 5% at the end of the storage period. This was probably due to a continuous exposure to the high relative humidities inside the PIX bags. If we look at the burlap, we had an initial decline from uh, about 78% down to about 68% in that first sampling, and then it increased back up to uh, approximately 80%, and we maintained basically 70% germination from our initial storage all the way through about 250 days. And then after 250 days, it dropped down to about 20%. This rapid decline at the end of the storage period is most likely due to our elevated temperatures during storage. The aflatoxin levels basically stayed at 2 ppb or less throughout the storage period in the PIX bags. The exception to staying at that low level of aflatoxin contamination was our final samples in the burlap, which averaged about eight parts per billion. This was most likely due to the insect activity that we had and infestation we had at the end of the season. The free fatty acids basically were no different as we went through storage, looking at the various storage types but it gradually increased from about 0.4% free fatty acids up to about 
On March 21st, 2018, about 159 days into storage, we noticed a powdery coating on some of the samples when we opened the bags. This was on some of the normal oleic peanuts, which happened to be Georgia 6G variety. And it was in the samples that were initially 8.2% initial moisture content. However, we only observed this on three out of the nine samples in the PIX bags. So we had one PIX bag and two PIX evacuated with the shop vac that had this mold powdery material on it. And it has been identified as a mold by Dr. Arias. And it's a mold that is very slow to grow with low water activity and seems to be unbothered by the anaerobic conditions in which we had the material. Based on the aflatoxin numbers, it's appeared that it did not produce aflatoxin. If we look at the insect damage or insects in these, we had no viable insects in the peanuts that were stored in PIX bags. However, we did have heavy infestations in the burlap bag. And this was probably the cause of the increased aflatoxin at the end of the storage period in our burlap samples. We also had some trouble with rodents in, in our storage facility. The peanut loss, primarily due to spillage, was about five pounds per bag in the burlap with minimal for the PIX bags. We maybe had three pounds out of the 36 bags, so roughly a pound peanuts or less. We did notice that the bag damage was primarily for nesting material and it appeared to be that the burlap was the preferred material, although they did gnaw on the outer poly bag some, but we had minimal damage for the polyethylene bags. So in summary, the PIX bags minimized insect damage. We had less rodent damage than burlap in the PIX bags. Seed quality, though, deteriorated in burlap and PIX bags. The germination decline was continuous in the PIX bags and remained 70% or above in the burlap bags until we had elevated temperatures. The free fatty acids increased steadily in all storages up to about 1%, and in about a third of the normal oleic peanuts with the higher initial moisture content developed this white powdery mold. And then there was no measurable increase in aflatoxin due to the storage method. For further information, if you would, contact me at my email address, chris.butts at usda.gov, and then look for this research to be submitted for publication in Peanut Science at peanutscience.com.